There is a general understanding in the game of American football that the fourth quarter is what really counts. That what has happened over the first three frames only sets the stage for the ultimate climax. Which is perhaps why the fourth installment of the International Bowl between the IFAF World Team and the U.S. Under-19 National Team comes with a sense of finality. I don't care how big you are, I got the bigger heart, I will take you down. That's how our culture is, like a chief. Once you achieve, you can't back down. We gotta make sure we prepare ourselves for a real football game. Not just go out there and showcase individual challenge. Like I tell my players all the time, you know, rewards come when you're unselfish. For the world team comprised of the best under 19 players from around the globe, it has been a long road towards respect. A lopsided loss in the first international bowl gave way to a narrow 21-14 defeat in the second laying the groundwork for their shocking upset of the USA just a year ago. In, the, in that first quarter, we made a couple big plays and they, they realized we can play, we can play with them, we, we can win this football game and they took control of the football game. The American loss was magnified a few months later at the U19 World Championships where yet again they came away without a gold. So as the teams return to Austin for this fourth quarter, it is apparent to all what is on the line. It's different now. You know, now um, we're coming in probably as on equal ground with the American team. We got to bring them victory. I mean, we are, you know, we're the home of football, so we got to make it happen. This is a story of two teams, one looking for redemption, the other respect. This is the 2013 International Bowl. As the teams open practice, a sense of urgency hangs in the air. The U.S. coaches will not let their roster of blue chip recruits lose focus. Leading the U.S. is quarterback Shane Cockerell, a Maryland recruit whose toughness underlies the new generation of dual threat QBs. Most quarterbacks are you know, in the slide when they get from the run of the ball. I mean, when somebody coming at me, I, I'm going back at them. Oh, Shane Cockrell is definitely a dual threat quarterback. You know, he can run uh, just as well as he can throw. He does both very, very well. And, uh, you know, I think that's a new breed of quarterback because it puts so much pressure on the defense. He is surrounded by a stable of talent, including Nebraska bound running back Terrell Newby and the host of talented receivers. We are here for a very, very serious game, and our coaching staff is going to take it that way. And I hope you do as well. Um, just like uh, Mr. Shea said, the last two times this game has been played, the United States of America has lost. And that's something that really, really frustrates me, and I hope it does you too. Uh, because that is unacceptable to play a game called American football, our game, and lose. <laughs> Across town, the IFAF world team must not only overcome a focused opponent, but communication barriers as players hail from dozens of countries. Difficult because we don't understand what the like Japanese coach says at the Japanese guy, and it's the, the, the same thing for the Finland guy and the Samoa. That that's really hard. While the core of the roster is familiar with U.S. competition. There are plenty of players who treat this pilgrimage to football's holy land as sacred. If a dream comes true, I mean, I come from Spain, there's not football at all, and I can play against guys that spend all their life playing football. It's, it's like a dream come true, I mean. It's a journey of hope as this collection of players can see the tangible effects of the program, with former team members Bjorn Warner of Florida State and Jesse Williams of Alabama on the threshold of the NFL. In, in practice, they were just beasts. And you know what? It was one of those things you just know. You know, you see the kid and you go, oh my God, like this, this is special. Any project needs that steering light, you know, something that, that everyone needs to look at. That, you know, that place that you, you'd like to you know, commit to. Being in the States against the best that USA has to offer is, 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 is huge. As game day approaches, a common theme of hard work and unity develops. For what wins in Austin is the same as in Austria or Australia. If you outwork 
your opponents, your teammates, and all your peers at the NC2A level, the three or four years you're there, okay, you get a chance to make a lot of money and keep playing this game until you're an old man. Whatever the problems are, okay, don't die easy, guys. Don't die easy, okay? <laughs> hey, and, and the biggest thing is what I liked about today is there was a lot of smiles out here and you had fun because that's what it's about, man. This game's about playing hard and having fun, okay? So just, yeah, hey, don't take it from me. Take it from those guys, okay? Greatest players to play the game, they all say the same thing, okay? So you don't want to be 25 and look back and go, wish I'd have worked a little harder. USA on three. One, two, three. USA. It's the fourth annual International Bowl here at Kelly Reeves Complex in Austin, Texas. Here CBS Sports Network proudly presents the United States Under-19 team taking on the International Federation of American Football. All right, gentlemen, listen up. Listen up. It's been only a week. It's been only a week. A week ago, you traveled from all corners of the world to get here to Texas. Many of you had never seen each other before. Many of most of you still saw each other for the first time. But through hard work, and that's what football is all about, hard work, you've come together as a team. We have a team in this room tonight. And that's what it's all about. Playing as a team, playing the, playing the game as a team. In the locker room before the game, tension is at its greatest. Coach Brady knows emotion is the key to victory. It's going to be a time in history for all of you. Your time is going to come. Make sure you're ready when your time comes. It's so whether you're starting or not starting, whether you're in the first series or not, at some point tonight, you're gonna have a time in history and a chance to make a big play. The U.S. wastes little time attacking, setting the tone on the opening kickoff. Team USA hoping for seven, they'll have to settle for three. So on third down and short, going to the air and he's got a guy! Throwing a little bit behind him, but going back to get it, it's Robin Gonzalez. Oh, this ball popped right into the hands of Shaquem Griffin. One of the Griffin twins on their way to UCF gets it right back to him. And even more impressive, born with a deformity on his left hand, removed when he was four years old. He and his brother off to be knights for George O'Leary. On first down. Right up the middle, and the new back is Newby. Same result as the last carry, though. It's a first down. Chains will move for Team USA. Shane Cockrell with the touchdown using his legs. The big play, courtesy of Teray Callaway, the defensive back from Seattle, Washington, on his way to the University of Nevada. The key to any game is to dominate the line of scrimmage. And when the dust settles, the Americans' lead is 22 points. But this physical edge creates an even bigger gap in the team's attitudes. The U.S.'s offensive explosion puts the game nearly out of reach, making the second half a mere formality celebration of the tremendous skill of these young players. And while their convincing victory restored Team USA's pride, the result of 16 quarters of fierce international competition has left a much deeper mark. 42 to 10, our final here at the 2013 International Bowl. Some leave Austin set for certain football futures. Others may never play again. It's a great honor and all these kids are great kids. I love playing for them. Yet all have been shaped and made better from the experience creating a global brotherhood between all who step between the white lines. You know, the more kids that we can, that we can have playing football, the, I think the better this world's gonna be.